So a lot of people are probably not going to like this movie. Greetings, fellow insomniacs. It's your friend in fright. Good old Chunky Larry from the Creature Features podcast and from the horrifying tales of horror. As many of you may know, I have committed to watching every single horror movie in 2024. This time around, I plop my fat ass down in a theater around other humans, and I watch the completion of the Ty West trilogy, Maxine. Following a traumatizing event that took place in a farmhouse, Maxine Minx finds herself where every traumatized girl in the 80s found themselves, Hollywood. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I heard all the scuttlebutt about what Maxine was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a send-up to Giallo and specifically the work of Dario Argento. And then I also heard somebody say that Oh no, it's supposed to be based on The New York Ripper, which is a fantastic Lucio Fulci film. If you haven't seen it, watch The New York Ripper. There are places in this film where it does fall into really pretentious territory. Mia Goth's Maxine Minx seems almost like Batman in stilettos. That's That, that checks out. But no bullshit, there are moments of pure brilliance in this movie. This paints Hollywood as this really seedy underbelly that's hidden under the veneer of beautiful vistas and colorful lights. The, oh, Hollywood's such a seedy place, and it's all pretty on the outside, but really on the inside it's yucky. It, 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 it feels trite and cliche, but what Ty West is sending up in this film is trite and cliche horror cinema like I I feel almost as if it's kind of done by design to make it feel of the era it never it never succeeds in that in the way that Pearl succeeds and in the way that X succeeds I think that there are moments of genuine brilliance that happen uh, but no, that's that does they miss the mark on that quite a bit. Felt like Kevin Bacon got out of his way long enough to do something really fucking interesting with his character. And the murder set pieces in this were fucking chef's kiss. There's one specific scene where somebody does some stomping and it's it's Oh, it's so good. And when they do try for Giallo, uh, they do certain things visually that just fucking work so fucking much for me. But I'm not going to lie to myself and think that everybody's going to love this movie. I love this movie. That doesn't mean everybody's going to love this movie. There are people that are detractors of Mia Goth's acting abilities. And to those people, I say, hey, you know what? It, more power to you. It, it, it's on display here, but it feels so aware of itself that it makes it hard to enjoy. But I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I was giddy as a fucking school child watching this movie. And I was nervous because I don't get excited about films. I don't put that idea into my head that something's going to be good because it always leaves you open for disappointment. So I just, I try to temper my expectations of things, which is why I don't watch trailers. I didn't watch anything about this film until I fucking saw it. And I'm so glad that I did because this was a fun fucking ride. It was a fun journey. It, it is mean spirited when it needs to be. It is funny when it needs to be. And it doesn't have the heart that X or Pearl had, but it fucking has me by the balls. This is easily one of my top three films for the year. It's not my top, but it's one of my top three. I fucking love this movie. Coming in with a Reaper for this one, I'm going to give this a four out of five. This was a lot of fucking fun. I thought that the things that worked really fucking worked, and the things that didn't, didn't fucking harm the film. That's going to do it for me. Be sure to give me a like and a follow. Go listen to Creature Features and watch the horrifying tales of horror and continue to listen. Someone you trust.